Brothers and sisters, the grace of the Holy Spirit has united us today. Taking up our cross, we say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And who came in the name of the Lord on that dark, sorrowful day? The myrrh-bearing women, when they came, had some danger to themselves, to the tomb. Still in the early darkness of the morning, just as the sun was rising, it was a very dangerous place in those days. But the myrrh bearers were driven by love. Love gave them courage. Love gave them strength. Love carried them to the tomb of the Savior to be the first to proclaim that he had risen. We celebrate this every morning, uh, Sunday morning, when we serve matins. We begin matins, all the lights are out, no one moves in the church. We solemnly read the six psalms. The church of the Christ is in the, in the grave. The doors are shut like the stone that was rolled to the tomb, waiting to be opened when the polyadae, the many mercies. We come also to this temple, like the myrrh bearers, striving at least to carry the myrrh of faith and love, the spices, some devotion, some struggle, some prayer, to find that our hearts have become the tomb of Christ and have become the place of his resurrection within us. For we, on that great Holy Friday, feel during the Lamentations, Christ entering our heart as, entering, as if entering the tomb. And then on Holy Pascha, when we cry out, Christ is risen, we feel the risen Christ rising in our hearts, giving joy to our souls, bringing the hope and expectation of the ages to each of us. When Christ was incarnate when he was born into this world, incarnate in the flesh, taking on the nature of mankind. Now he seeks to be incarnate within us, in each one of us, to have the incarnation of Jesus Christ, filling our heart with joy, filling our souls with expectation and life, the joy of life, the hope of life everlasting. As we shall see on the ascension, he carried our human nature purified, perfected, into the heavenly kingdom and set it at the right hand of the glory of God. In this expectation, brothers and sisters, we fall asleep in this life. We depart from this life. For us, perhaps, it is Holy Friday. But surely our own Pascha will come, our own resurrection will come our own ascension into the glory of a living God will also come. If we persevere with faith through this life, if we can find courage born of love, the courage to struggle, the courage to strive to maintain the faith within our hearts, a living faith, As some kind of light in the darkness that often envelops us in the world around us. 
But if Christ is for us, who can be against us? And so the darkness, the light still shines in the darkness, and the darkness has still not comprehended it, still not overpowered it. The light shines in our own hearts. The light shines in our hope, our expectation, our faith, our struggle to find out the true meaning of Christ on the cross, to understand that Christ on the cross was the highest manifestation of co-suffering love, of unselfish love, that would be possible. So when we look upon the cross and we wonder, what is my calling? What am I called to in this life? The power of Satan is defeated by the power of unselfish love in each of us. As we grow in unselfish love, so the power of Satan recedes and the darkness recedes around us. So what is our calling? We come to receive Holy Communion that Christ might abide in us. We might participate in the risen Christ. But think, brothers and sisters, that he also participates in us, in each one of us as we receive Holy Communion. We participate mystically in that body which he, in which he ascended into the heavens. Even when we approach Holy Communion, we should approach it as a mirror-bearing women. Approach it with faith, with love, with trembling, with fear, with awe. And our preparation for Holy Communion is like purchasing the myrrh and aloes, the spices that the myrrh-bearing women carried with them when they went to the tomb that morning. This is our true struggle and this is a true Orthodox Christian life. Not that we judge or condemn the darkness of the world around us, that we seek not to be a part of it spiritually. Physically we must live in this world and interact with everybody else all the while trying not to judge and not to condemn, but to look toward heavenly kingdom, to look toward the glory of God, and not to curse the darkness around us, but seeing that glory and that hope, that expectation to light a candle in the midst of the darkness. Remember that the darker the night, the more brightly shine the stars, We're called to shine in the midst of this darkness, but how? With moralism, by turning our faith into some kind of politics, by thinking we can change the world or even change the nation in which we live. When we have so great a struggle, even to change ourselves, even to change our own hearts, even to find that courage born of love that drove the Burberry women to the tomb on that dark and frightening morning. So we come here today to see the door to the door to the tomb wide open. But not only did the angel roll away the stone that marked the tomb, but at the same time opened the gates of paradise to mankind he called us, as we shall see on the ascension, called all of us to participate in the very nature of God, just as God participated in our nature in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> For Christ became man so that man could become God so that we could be restored once more to that glory we had at the beginning of time, walking together with God as one face to face.
but to humble ourselves, to not be triumphalist, triumphalist in this world, <clears throat> to not say we're orthodox so we're right and all of you are wrong, but rather to embrace the orthodox faith with prayer and with struggle that we not also sink into the quicksand of the society and the culture around us spiritually. Physically we're in this world that a spiritually aspire, struggle to be already in that world which is to come, in that age which is to come. Today, brothers and sisters, as you approach Holy Communion, just as you approach the church and the gospel to kiss the reverence the gospel. Come with a courage born of love and a humility and a trembling lest you lose that treasure which has been bestowed upon us, which exists in our, even in the hearts of each of us. Today, brothers and sisters, be murder bearers also. And come with fear and trembling before the Lord, bearing those spices, the myrrh, the aloes, in your hearts, in your soul, in your mind. Because in so doing, you can remember why you're here this morning. Why did you come here this morning? not just to participate in a ritual, but through the grace of the Holy Spirit to participate in Jesus Christ, to in some way, in some small way, begin to participate in the glory of God. This is our Orthodox Christian life, that others around us fight their cultural wars, drag politics into the church and secularize it, forget what it is we're doing, why we're doing it, and why we're here. You come this morning to find the holy doors closed at the beginning, And then suddenly, glory to thee who has shown us the light. Christ has risen and shown us the light. Shine the light of eternity upon us. Open the doors of paradise before us. Brothers and sisters, with great prayer and humility and trembling lest we lose our treasure through our own folly, come this morning bearing as if those spices to anoint Christ, instead bearing love, bearing the courage of the faith, bearing the hope of eternity, approaching with fear and trembling the body and blood of Christ, and proclaiming to the world that Christ is risen, not only in words but in our faith, in our joy, in our expectation, in our love for one another. Listening to the Beatitudes, this is what we're called to, brothers and sisters, to assimilate into our heart the Beatitudes and those commandments to which Christ has called us and cherish them in our heart like myrrhs, spices, and aloes realizing that through the grace of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ dwells within each one of us. <clears throat> that Christ was buried within our hearts and he rises within our hearts and fills our soul with light and joy. Don't squander that light and joy, brothers and sisters. Embrace it. Allow Christ to be incarnate in each of you through the grace of the Holy Spirit. Look around you. 
and see your brother and sister for whom Christ died. And hear Christ calling us, love one another as I've loved you. Brothers and sisters, let us love one another with a holy love, a peaceful love, and reflect the love of our Lord Jesus Christ in that unselfish love for one another. We came to this temple this morning saying we're going to worship Christ. You worship Christ with your love, with your love for one another. You didn't come to give, but to receive. With the joy of the myrrh-bearing women, let us cry out, Christ is risen! Christos in Viat! Christos was Christian! Christian! Christian!